when you're exposed to those substances. Now we know that there's three things that are associated with increased excitotoxicity. We already said uh, immaturity of the brain makes you four times more sensitive. Second is energy deficits. Anytime a brain cell has difficulty generating energy, it becomes infinitely more sensitive to excitotoxin. So if you have low blood sugar, if you're running a race and you didn't eat properly and your blood sugar's falling, if you're dieting severely, uh, if you have a disorder of your mitochondria and you can't produce the energy, whatever the cause of a lack of energy in that brain cell, it's going to magnify the cytotoxic process. And it can magnify it as much as a hundredfold. It can magnify it so much that even a normal concentration of glutamate in your brain can be toxic. Magnesium deficiency is the third thing. Magnesium deficiency in this country is very common. A recent review showed 75% of people are magnesium deficient. Magnesium protects that little pore where the calcium comes in. It closes the hole. If you take a human being and you make them hypomagnesium, that is you remove the magnesium, they will have a seizure and they will go into a coma. And before that, they'll become psychotic. And this has been done or seen many times in clinical patients. And if you give them magnesium, they turn them back to normal if you do it in time. And that's because magnesium prevents this excitotoxicity process. This is just the cycle we've already talked about, that excitotoxins cause free radicals. Free radicals damage things inside of the cell. It damages the DNA, the proteins, the lipid membranes. So it does a lot of damage to your cell. And that damage accumulates over a lifetime. And that's basically what aging is. And we see that certain types of DNA are more sensitive than the others. Your mitochondria has its own DNA. It's 10 times more sensitive than the DNA you normally think of in the nucleus. Older cells have DNA damage at a rate four times higher than younger cells, especially after age 70. So the older you get, the more sensitive you are to free radicals. So therefore, the more sensitive you're going to become to MSG and other excitotoxins. Now let's look at Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a, a very complex disease, but we're beginning to get a handle on it. The most common thought of uh, the etiology is that it's excessive excitotoxicity in the brain. Now what triggers that, it's a different story. We know that the loss of energy in the brain precedes Alzheimer's disease by as much as a decade. You can scan the brain of people and you can find out that these areas that are going to be affected are already losing their energy supply, even though they're perfectly normal at the time. Ten years later, they come down with Alzheimer's disease. And that's because, as we said, when you lose that energy, you magnify the excitotoxic process. Now, I'm not saying that Alzheimer's disease or any neurodegenerative disease is caused by eating MSG. It's probably more complex about the, than that. It, it may be the release in the brain. but we know that Alzheimer's disease can be significantly aggravated by MSG in the diet because, number one, Alzheimer's disease damages the blood-brain barrier. You lose your barrier. You're at low energy. Your cells can't produce energy. The cells are damaged by free radicals, so they're more sensitive. So in a state, if you have Parkinson's disease or if you have Alzheimer's disease or any of these degenerative diseases, you're at a lot more risk. Parkinson's disease, one of the first things we see occur in Parkinson's disease is the loss of a substance called glutathione in the cells that are affected. This is a, a molecule that protects you against free radicals. It's very, very important. It is lost years, decades, before you ever develop Parkinson's disease. Then you begin to accumulate iron in those cells. And we said iron is a very powerful free radical generator. So the cell can't protect itself against free radicals. You increase the free radicals with the iron. Then the energy begins to drop, and this particular loss of the energy of 42 or 47 percent loss of complex one energy generation in the mitochondrion, and the cell dies. Well, it's an excitotoxic process that's triggering all of this. Uh, there's also, you've heard of haloperidol, haldol, which is used to help some people sleep, or, or well, haldol will produce the same amount of de uh, depression of complex one energy generating enzyme as you see in Alzheimer's disease, I mean in Parkinson's disease. 
these are the common things you see. The important ones you need to know is you, uh, people that develop these degenerative brain diseases all have low vitamins in their brain, particularly antioxidant vitamins. Very low magnesium in all of these diseases uh, is very low. Cellular energy is low in all these diseases. High iron content, high free radicals, all this oxidation in their cells, and high intracellular calcium. There's an obsession with taking calcium in this country. They tell the elderly, you've got to have this calcium, eat these tums, take this calcium supplement. As you get older, your cells have more and more difficulty keeping the uh, calcium out. You don't want to flood the brain with more calcium. You speed up the process. This is just some of the enzymes that are known to be defective in these two diseases, Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. We've talked about that. Here's where we end. This is how glucose gets into your brain. This is a blood vessel. This is the brain cells. The glucose has to go from the inside of the blood vessel into the brain to get to the brain cells. But it doesn't just diffuse like it does in the rest of the body. The brain has a very tight control of anything that gets into it. And what happens is the glucose attaches to a transport protein and it carries it into the brain. We know that as you get older, this glucose transporter is defective. And it continues to become more defective. And Alzheimer's disease is very defective. And this leads to the last concept, that is the concept of brain hypoglycemia. And that is that because of this defective transport of glucose into the brain, which remember is magnified by MSG, the brain doesn't have enough glucose where it is, but the blood can have normal glucose. And uh, that causes the brain to be hypoglycemic. So if you go to the doctor and he draws your blood, he says your blood sugar is normal. But that doesn't tell you what your brain is doing. Your brain can be extremely deficient in uh, glucose. And it has been remarked by several observers that Alzheimer's disease closely resembles when you see people having hypoglycemia. So it may be that there's a chronic hypoglycemia developing of the brain. That magnifies excitotoxicity, opens up the blood-brain barrier, toxins get in, and it keeps the process going. And lastly, the point I want to emphasize is something that, that Vicki was saying. Your entire metabolic processes is programmed from birth. And they found in multiple studies that if you look at the weight and size of a baby when it's born, that's going to affect its metabolism from then on. If it's small and thin and, and unhealthy to begin with, it will alter the metabolism for the rest of that child's life. So whatever you do early on, MSG or whatever, to alter the metabolism, alter these nerve cells, it's going to affect that child from then on. And that's why I wrestled with this book. I said, knowing what I know, I can't keep this silent. People have to know this. This is so frightening and so scary, and it is in all the food that people need to know. So we'll end there since they're flashing cards at me. <laughs>